Andrew Tate is by far the most polarizing figure we have ever seen, taking over social media in a matter of months with his controversial beliefs and persuasive personality, building what seems like a cult for young men who are desperate to be successful and have a fear of being mediocre. That. That right there is Andrew Tate's main selling point that sucks the money in. Because not only is he selling you an ideal vision of what you could be, financially free, with abundance of time, doing whatever you want, getting all the women you want, and driving any car you want. He is also selling the part of you that you fear to become. Working at McDonald's until you're 40, driving a 2012 Honda Civic, being overweight with no girlfriend or wife in sight. Andrew Tate is a true salesman and understands that fear defeats idealism majority of the time. So if he doesn't hook you in with his lavish lifestyle, it will make you fear your future. I'm not saying that signing up for Andrew Tate's course is bad. It's always good to learn different ways on how to make money. It's just that his business model revolves around bringing more and more people into the course and keeping them, serving them financial information like dropshipping, e-commerce and stocks that will only get them a couple hundred or thousand bucks. And the strong reason as to why they sign up in the first place is because of FOMO, one of Andrew Tate's rules for money that we will visit later on. I do not hate Andrew Tate, nor do I love him, but what I do respect is his outlook on money and business. Hence why I created the 7 Rules for Money by Andrew Tate. You will learn 7 rules about money that could alter your life for good. 7 rules that can get you to a 7 figure income. Andrew Tate's net worth is nearly at a billion dollars, money that people wouldn't see even if they lived 100 lives. We obviously can't take his business ideas and run, but what we can do is analyze his habits, his rules for money, and incorporate it into our own lives to have a successful and luxurious future that you deserve. Are you ready? Get a pen and a notepad, because this information is truly life-changing. This is the Power Analysis. And here is Andrew Tate's seven rules for money. Rule one, speed is everything. This rule is super important, especially in this day and age where technology changes rapidly. I mean, an example would be ChatGPT. A new technology that's making waves in the world of AI, ChatGPT. 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 Chat it can do pretty much anything you tell it to do. Boom. Out of nowhere, we can chat with bots and they give us the answers. Think about how much money you would have made if you hopped on the chat GBT bandwagon and created a business revolving around it. People sold books, graphic design, illustrations, and even music, slashing away tremendous amount of time that it would have taken you to create it. This rule doesn't only apply to money, it applies to real life too. The quicker you solve your problems, the more time you'll have on your hands and the better it will be. However, this does not mean to lower the quality of your product just because you're going quickly. You must up the speed, but keep your quality in check. Here's an example from Andrew Tate. Speed is extremely important in business. Everything that needs to be done must be done fast. That doesn't mean it has to be done cheap or shit. It means it has to be done quickly. People seem to conflate the two, that if you do something quickly, it must be terrible. That's not the case. When you're a professional fighter, you learn to punch. Your instructor says faster, faster, faster. You learn to punch faster. You don't degrade your punch. You don't start punching like an idiot. You keep the same quality of punch, but you do it quicker. Rule two, stress tolerance. Learn to care about things mentally, but not emotionally. How successful you are as a hustler is directly linked to how much stress you can tolerate. Money making is only stress tolerance. So when you're making money, most of the time, what you're doing is you're taking stress off other people, especially if you provide a service. Even if it's a cleaning service, you're taking away stress from someone else. You're adopting someone else's stress for cash. The more stress you can adopt, the more money you can take. You need to have high stress tolerance as a hustler, as a money maker, as a businessman. You have to be able to deal with stress. Things are gonna go wrong all the fucking time. You have to be able to just ride the waves. How much stress can you tolerate? Do you understand how you get stressed? What do you do when you get stressed? Drink, eat, watch YouTube or TV shows, maybe some TikTok, 
Stress tolerance is directly linked to how successful you could be. If you can handle lots of stress, you can handle lots of money. Things will go wrong all the time. After all, business is all about solving problems, other people's problems, and your company's problems. Money is stress. Once someone gives you their money, they are giving you stress. Because now, you need to know what to do with that money. Can't put it in the bank because inflation will eat through it. Can't put it in Bitcoin right now because it's currently a bull run. Can't invest in your friend's clothing brand because it's ass. So many choices, so many thoughts, so many ideas that won't come into fruition if your stress tolerance is low. Sell the result of a product, not the product itself. We've already discussed this. So we'll discuss it again very, very quickly in case you weren't paying fucking attention. Rule three, sell the result of your product. Your customers don't care if you spent 1,000 hours on your product, if your product has cool packaging or your business has a cool name. What are you promising your customer? What will their future look like if they bought your product? And this has to be genuine. Your product needs to actually help your customer. Otherwise, your business will drop face first. Will they become rich, strong and healthy, good with girls? That needs to be your selling point. Sell them on what they could be. Ebook. Selling the product is I have an ebook and I deliver it to you instantly and it has eight pages and 5,400 words and it talks about girls. That's selling the ebook. Selling the result is you're gonna understand women and you're gonna have a better sex life for the rest of your life and you're gonna have lots of women in your bed. Which of them is more interesting for $17? The result. Always sell the result. Rule four. Start cheap. If you're building spaceships or social media sites, this obviously does not apply to you. But for the majority of you who probably do social media content, reselling or labor work, start it cheap. You do not need hundreds of thousands of dollars to start a company. Realistically speaking, you'll only need like $1,000. Just think about it. If your business idea is terrible and it's inevitable that it will fail even if your website looks pretty, what's worse? Losing $1,000 or $20,000? Especially for entrepreneurs who are beginners, your idea is most likely terrible. So make mistakes fast, but also cheaply. If you start a makeup company this way, you need minimum 200 grand. You need an office, you need logos, you need trademarks, you need stock, you need staff, you need company incorporation, you need tax, you need accountants, you need advertising budgets, you need 200 grand, 200K to start this business. If you start business this way, make a website, put some pictures on there, pretend you've got a whole bunch of stuff you ain't got and start getting money in, you can start this business for five grand. Let's say for the website, five grand. That's 195 grand difference. Now, the problem with this business is you're gonna start getting money in and you're not gonna have any way to fulfill the orders. But back to business lesson number one, because you're a fast worker, because you're industrious, because you work with speed, you'll find a way to fulfill the orders. Hey, listen, worst case, you give them the money back. Worst case, you refund them. But at least with this idea, you can test the viability of your plan, one. And two, you're not in the hole. So let's assume both companies are bound to fail. Here you've lost five grand. Here you've lost 200 grand. Why risk all that money? Rule five, aim high. If you aim for the moon, you'll reach the stars. If you aim for the stars, you'll reach the sky. If you aim for the sky, you'll stay on the ground. It's true that we humans need a clear goal and knowing our goal gives us a higher chance of succeeding at it. However, some people who have a goal never reach it. Why? They were aiming too low. You must want more and more. Another consequence of aiming too low is this. You make a goal, you reach it, and now you're stagnant. You won't move because you can't be asked to do more because you don't need any more as you've already reached your previous goal. I can definitely relate to this back when I reached 100,000 subscribers. Reaching 100,000 subscribers was my goal, so I did it. I received the silver plaque, but now what? I have no desire to increase my subscribers because there's no point for me to do so. Hence, I created a new goal to help 10,000 people with procrastination, achieving their goals quickly 
and being a highly productive machine with my book, Mindbreaker. I've already mentioned in my previous video how many people's lives this book has changed already, financially, physically, and mentally. So if you want a copy of this book, get Mindbreaker in the description. Rule six, high confidence. People like confidence. If I'm gonna spend my money with you, I want you to be extremely confident on what you're doing with my money. If I'm gonna, okay, so let's say I'm going in for surgery. I'm gonna go see a doctor for surgery. Do I want that doctor to be confident about the operation or nervous? Do I want the doctor to say, yeah, I've done this loads of times. Yeah, I know exactly what we're gonna do here. Yeah, it's easy, it's simple. I've done it loads of times. Or do I want them to be like, oh, well, yeah, I mean, things can go wrong and, you know, you know, I didn't sleep last night. Like, what do you want? You want confidence. So if someone's going to spend money with you, they want you to be confident all the time. Confidence sells, even if you don't know what the hell you're doing. If you assure someone with great confidence that everything is fine, even when you know it's not fine, shit won't hit the fan. Everything will be under control for the time being until you get your problems fixed. Also, if you're not confident in your product, no one is buying from you. And sure as shit, best believe that no one's investing in you. To be confident in the product, you must be confident in yourself. And to be confident in yourself, you must be a well-crafted individual with no major flaws that could set you back. Do you know what else makes people buy things? FOMO, fear of missing out. Rule seven, use FOMO. People want things that not everyone can have. Use cars, for example. What's more desirable, Porsche 911 or a 2010 Volkswagen Golf? Not really a competition, is it? Not everyone can have a Porsche 911, but this doesn't really incorporate FOMO. So let's use a better example. Buy a pair of Nike socks and get 50% off on your next order. But hurry, this offer only lasts for 48 hours. Pretty decent, isn't it? If you don't buy the socks, you won't get the 50% discount that you could have applied to some Travis Scott Jordan ones. Here's Andrew Tate's example. How do you instill FOMO? Well, here's how most of you guys instill FOMO. If you don't buy now, we're closing and you won't be able to buy. No one cares because we know that that's a lie and we know that you're just closing it artificially to try and make some artificial deadline. So no one cares. How do I instill FOMO? I talk about how many other people have already bought it. All these people over here know what I know. You don't know shit. Talk about other people buying your product and it will make people want to buy your product because they'll feel like they missed out. I hope you took down some notes and are ready to incorporate it into your own life. If you want to see more business content on entrepreneurship, investing and finance, then subscribe to this channel. This is The Power Analysis and you have watched The 7 Rules for Money by Andrew Tate.